Okay, well this is uh, part four of our discussion about how the human soul functions. And in this part of the discussion, we're going to talk about the principle of dominance. So over to you, my love. No worries. Well, let's first read the basic principle. The dominance is the principle that the soul dominates the mind and has full control over the mind, whether the mind believes itself to be in control or not. <laughs> <laughs> the mind is not capable of ever having full control of the soul, and the soul will always, at some point in our future, exercise its dominance since that is the purpose of its own creation. Since the soul is emotion, sentiment, desire, passion, longing, aspiration, feeling, sensory, fervour, excitement, and with other similar attributes and characteristics, and not dominantly intellectual or mental, and the mind is just one single attribute or organ of the soul, it is impossible for a truth to enter the soul without being accompanied with emotional feelings in addition to logical thought. Mm. In addition, it is also impossible for error to enter or leave the soul without emotional feelings. Yeah. So, again, this feels like we're building on things we've talked about in the previous parts. Yeah. We, we talked about absorption, how error must leave for truth to enter and vice versa. Or yeah. It's unlikely that truth would leave. Uh, Sometimes that happens where truth yeah. leaves and error. Like you see it happen when people go through traumatic events yeah, that's very and true. they become very angry and, yeah. and, and upset. And yeah. sometimes as a result of that, the the, the, they let go of a truth they've always held on to all their life emotionally yeah. and through other emotions entering them, they absorb an error. Yeah. Uh, and that, unfortunately that Sadly. does happen. And, uh, but, but it is quite an emotionally tumultuous process, of course, yes. but it does happen. And this is how many people in the human race became in the condition mm. that they currently are through that event happening yeah. through, through, through their life. You know? Yeah, that's yeah. sad, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it is. But so this um, dominance is saying to us then from what you've said that the soul is always in charge. It's always the thing that is dominating experience and yeah. uh, thought and all things. But also in there you said that emotional feelings and logical thought always accompany a truth. Correct. Yep. Yes. Yeah. So, so what, I, what I'm basically saying in this principle, and remember it's a principle, and that is that the, the soul, if we understand that the soul dominates everything, mm -hmm. then we become more soul-centric rather than intellectual-centric. Yep. And what I mean by that is that we focus more on what's within our soul than thinking things in our mind, right? Mm -hmm. So we're, we're more concerned about what's really going on within our feelings and our emotions and our desires and our passions and our longings. That's what we're concerned with. And you can understand that that's the reason we should be concerned with those things because that's all what is about love. So what we love, what are our loves, will determine our actions to a large extent. So if we love doing things that are destructive and evil, then of course, our soul will degrade in its condition. If we love doing things that are good and upright, then our soul will grow in its condition. But our soul is always going to control what we eventually do. No matter how much intellectual control we attempt to exercise, our soul will always exercise or attempt to exercise its dominance. Yes. All right. And even with people who are intellectually dominant, the soul is really far more dominant and far more controlling than they realise. Yeah. You know, they often do many things that they look back on and go, why did I do that? I don't believe that. I don't think that. Mm -hmm. But their soul is, is pushing them along a certain direction. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this is why sometimes people get confused. You know, they, they think they've grown up with a religious faith, for example, all of their life and they believe in love. They believe that love is the, the answer to all things and yet they're unloving. <laughs> and the reason why is because there's emotions in their soul that are exercising dominance all the time, trying to, trying to show them that actually there's a problem in the soul, not in the mind. The mind, you forget about the problem in the mind. The problem is not there. The problem's in the soul. And the soul will do what the soul desires to do unless you work through why it has these desires. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That, that's the fact. Yep. So... And you could say the soul then is the true self. Yes. Couldn't yeah. you? The soul is the true self and whatever we think is our true self may or may not be our true self depending on how much 
we are connected to, to our, soul, our soul, to our yeah. feelings and yeah. our emotions and our desires and our passions. Yeah. That, that is going to be the real self. Yeah. Mm. And something that struck me in uh, feeling about this principle is that, which could be good news or <laughs> depending on <laughs> how you come at it, yeah. is that effort will always be required to suppress the soul. Yes. So um, some of us who don't want to welcome our soul uh, feel that that is a bad thing. I'm always going to have to try. Yes. But actually, if we look at it from God's perspective, that's a wonderful thing, isn't it? Yes. Because the thing that is our true self and the thing that is dictating all of our experiences and creating our attractions, this thing is very hard to dominate. Yes. It, yeah. In fact, it dominates. Yes, God made it that way. Like, God made it foolproof. God, yeah. God made it that way so that eventually we'd realise something else is going on here. No matter how much I use my intellect, I still can't seem to change in my soul's progression with regard to love. What's yeah. going on? There must be something in my soul, something in some other location other than my mind yeah. that's causing me to want to take these actions and I need to find it. Yeah. I need to discover it. I need to release it if I'm ever going to become more loving. This is a sad thing as well I feel about the state of the world is that many people have given up on the idea that change is possible. Yes. And many people actually believe, well, a person is the person that they are. From seven years on, that's it. You've, it's done and dusted. And, and for the majority of people, that is true. That's right. That, many people believe that because there's very little engagement with these principles yes. in day-to-day -day life. Yes. Yeah. Most people have no awareness of how the soul can truly change. And as such, many people have a belief that you can't really change. <laughs> you can't really change is yeah. what they believe. They, they, they feel that um, any change would have to be forced upon the soul mm. rather, than, rather than, and then co of course that's what they attempt to do through their intellect, rather than understanding that it's only because of the error in the soul that needs to be released that no change is happening. Yeah. It's only that that is the true cause of no change. Yeah. 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 Okay. Mm. So um, moving on to just some other points that I th thought were relevant. Yeah. Um, that the mind, we've talked a lot about how much we want to use this mind of our spirit body to, to actually to develop that rather mm. than in our soul, mm -hmm. in our other discussions. But in this case, the mind is often used as a tool of denial to suppress the true feelings of the soul rather than a processor and an investigator that can help us to discover the soul and the soul, what the, the soul's dominance is all about. Yeah. yeah, about, I think it would have been eight or nine years ago now, I wrote a paper, I suppose you would call it, yep. a letter to some people, about um, using the mind differently. Mm -hmm. And most people really struggle to use their mind differently than what they've been educated to do from their childhood onwards. Yep. So most people have been taught to use their mind as the controller of the soul. Yes. And this is our main problem. We think that it can control the soul and then we're taught to use our mind to attempt to control the soul. And, and sometimes it's, it's successful for periods of time. Yep. Of course, it's never going to be eternally successful because the soul is always going to exercise dominance. dominance yeah. And so what happens though is that we start telling ourselves, well, the proper use of our mind is to control everything. Yeah. But that's not the proper use of our mind. The proper use of our mind is to seek and discover all emotions inside of our soul and to release those emotions in a way that's loving. Yes. That's the proper use of our mind. Yeah. So in other words, if our soul feels like going out and killing someone, that's a problem. Yeah. And what we do is we allow ourselves to feel the emotion and feel the reason why it's present. But we use our mind to, to say, don't you go and do that unloving thing. Mm -hmm. Feel this unloving emotion instead. Yeah. Feel the feeling you feel that you want to do it. And if you truly get to the cause of this feeling, you'll release it. And all of a sudden that feeling will dissipate from you and you will no longer feel that way towards that person. Yes. And yeah. that's the proper way to use the mind. Yes, to engage the next principle that we'll talk about later, which is about progression. Yeah. Um, but it's a very Christian viewpoint that you highlighted, isn't it, that we must use the mind to control the animal instincts of the person or the original sin that exists within us. Oh, I feel it's in it, most religions, it, not just in the Christian yep. faith. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yep. And yet there is this other great opportunity that we have that you just 
pointed out, to yeah. actually engage our mind to discover yes. and then to heal things. Yes. And that's the only way things can change permanently. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and I feel that the majority of people in religious faith don't understand that basic principle yeah. that permanent change is not possible unless you understand the soul is going to try for dominance continuously. Yeah. And the only way to fix this is to actually release from the soul the error of what it wants to dominate. Yes. You know, the, the error that it wants to take. Yeah. Now, unfortunately, in Bible texts and other Holy Scripture texts, there are thoughts such as the heart is treacherous and who can know it. Mm -hmm. So that's basically telling you not to trust your soul. Yep. And what I'm suggesting is trust your soul's feelings. You don't have to act upon them. Yeah. Right? There's a difference between feeling the soul's feelings and then taking an action upon them. Right? So, so if the feeling of the soul is to go and do something that from God's perspective is obviously unloving, then you would use your mind to help you not take that action but you would also use your mind to find the reason why you feel that you want to take that action. Yes. And that's where most religious faiths fall down. They don't use their mind to find the reason. Mm -hmm. They only use their mind to control or dominate or attempt to dominate the soul. And of course, it's never successful. Yeah. Yeah, it, they always finish up reverting to that behaviour. So, so a lot of men, for example, with regard to their desires for looking at a naked woman's body, they revert to pornography. Then, they, then in the Christian faith, they feel very guilty about the fact that they're looking at pornography. So they feel very like, much like they're sinners and isn't it terrible? They're asking for forgiveness. And then the very next week, they want to look at pornography again. Mm -hmm. Now, why is that? It's because there's something in the soul that needs to change that causes them to desire to look at pornography all the time and not be focused sexually on their own partner if they have one. Yeah. And as a result of that, they, they focus on you know, feeling all bad and guilty and terrible mm -hmm. but, but not finding the real reason why oh. they feel drawn to pornography. Once you find the real reason why you're drawn to pornography, you won't be drawn to it anymore. Yeah. And yeah. then you won't, you, know, you won't desire to do it. Yeah. And, and so you won't have to try to not look. There will be no desire in you to buy it or to look at it on the internet or any of those things. And then you don't have to feel guilty <laughs> either <laughs> that you've done it because yeah. you no longer do it. And that's the thing, isn't it? Um, this, the error within the soul is going to try to dominate. Yeah. Well, it, it's, it's designed to dominate our experience. Yes. But the longer we live in denial or try to deny and we use all this effort and we create fear about even feeling and discovering what's in our soul, mm -hmm. the more it becomes a problem, doesn't it? Yes. And it requires more effort and we have more fear. And, and the actual, the interesting thing that happens is it's a very interesting thing that goes on. We have to use our mind to think about dominating more. Yes. And as a result, we finish up thinking more about the problem, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> which actually causes a stronger attraction to the problem. Yes. Right. Yes. So it's quite clever that God made this system that the more you try to dominate your soul with your mind by thinking about the problem and trying to focus on the problem, the more the problem becomes <laughs> yeah. evident. Yeah. I just. <laughs> and it's I, quite. Yeah. You know, and that. And, and the interesting thing is you, if you focus your attention instead on finding the reason why you feel that way in your soul and you release it, you don't have to think about it at all. And as a result, it is out of your mind and yeah. so therefore you're not focused on it yeah. anymore and so it doesn't come up. Yeah. <laughs> I just had a memory of um, an episode of Faulty Towers yeah. and for anyone watching, that's a, like an English comedy show with John Cleese. And they have a German person come into the hotel to stay and he says to all the staff, don't mention the war, don't mention the war. And so obviously he... And all of them want to mention the war And all he the time. ends up mentioning the war and references to the war all of the time because he's trying so hard not <laughs> don't to. Don't mention it, yeah. 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 And that's exactly how we are with the soul. The soul will do what it desires. Yeah. And unless we look at the reason why, we're never going to get rid of the cause. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And what struck me... I mentioned earlier this effort, this terrible effort that we have to put in. Yep. And if we think about that on a global scale, where just about everyone on the earth is trying to suppress and deny what's in their soul, it's like a, a global, like a huge waste of energy. 
to yeah. me, it's like... Yes, if we had to analyse how much energy the whole human race wastes on trying to change things that are never going to change unless we look at the real reasons why they're there, yeah. um, you know, it's, a, it's amazing. In fact, almost the entire medical profession is focused on changing the effects of things. Yeah. So you look at that entire... That's, that's in, a, in, a, in any country, that's billions and billions and billions of dollars of taxpayers' funds yeah. going towards the wrong use of, the, of our energy. Yeah. We're trying to f fix the effect rather than fix the cause. And that's because we don't understand dominance. We think that fixing the effect does something, yeah. and it doesn't. Yeah. It just keeps causing the same problem over and over again because we're not focused on the cause. A person who speeds is going to speed until you fix the reason why he speeds. Yeah. You can make as many laws as you want. You can fine him as much as you want. He'll still speed. He will. You can throw him in jail and the very next day after he gets out, he'll probably speed. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Until you focus on the reason why he does it, you won't change anything. Yeah. And the same applies to people, you know, with relationships cheating on each other, you know, parents abusing children and all of these other aspects of life that cause us so much trouble. Unless we, find, unless we focus on what is dominant, the soul, and find the reason inside the soul why that happens, no change is really going to occur ever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we're going to live it. We'll be like, you know, living the same day over and over and over again. It's like Groundhog, that movie Groundhog yep, yep, Day yep. With, with Bill Murray in it where he's living the same day over and over again, trying a different action yeah. without finding a change in his soul. And it's only when he changed in his soul that something, something. in his day actually finished yeah. up really changing. And that's the same yeah. with us. Like We need to change our soul so that things can really change. Yeah. And until we do that, nothing can change. And globally, man, there's so much wasted money, Time, effort, going towards trying to fix, provide solutions to fixing the effects rather than understanding why they occur. Which is all about the dominance of what's in the soul. Correct. And I even thought about it just on a person by person scale, the emotional energy, the mind yeah. power that so many of us are using to suppress and deny the dominance of, of the what's end. already inside of us. Yes. Imagine if we use that energy in different ways. If we just gave up and surrendered and said, yep. okay, I'm like that. Yep. <laughs> this is me. <laughs> this is me. And I can see there's a lot of bad things here now. Let's try and find the reason why I feel this way. Yeah. That would be a lot better use of our effort than trying to go, no, I'm not like that. No, I'm not yep. like that. Don't yep. tell me I'm like that. Don't you, you know, fighting with everybody who tells you you're yep. like that. Yep. You know, trying to control the knowledge that we are like what we are. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a very important part principle of the of dominance. I feel, and and I feel too that many of us are act actually acting in denial of dominance. Yeah. Because you look at how many people talk about diet and all the time, and you know, you know, taking you know taking this pill, that pill. You know, habits of highly habits successful people. Of highly, you know, yeah, changing our habits and all, all of these focuses on the physical body. They're all, they're all focused because we don't understand our soul. We don't mm. understand that even how fat our body is is totally determined by what's going on within our soul. Yeah. And, and that's driving what we eat. Yes. <laughs> you know, if we could change what's in the soul, we wouldn't eat the same things and we wouldn't need to go on diets and we wouldn't, we'd slim up straight away. Yep. You know, it's, it's the same principle with every single walk of life. And so when we are focused on the physical all the time, yep. it is proof that we don't understand dominance. We, yeah. It's proof that we don't understand our soul. If you're focused on a physical cure or physical solution to your problems, it's proof that you're yet to understand this principle. You're yes. yet to understand the principle of dominance. And also, uh, I feel it's because we've been trained away from trusting our feeling state. And so we feel more comfortable. We, change, we trust more things that physical things seem more tangible to us even than to our own feelings because we've been so trained away from trusting our feelings as children. Oh, I do say? also, though, feel that a lot of our feelings are not trustworthy <laughs> in the sense that uh, you know, okay. we are often in the superficial part of our feelings rather than in the causal part of our feelings. You know how 
we talk to people about there's their true nature and personality, then there's injured nature and personality, and then there's their facade nature and personality. Mm -hmm. And most people live almost totally in their facade nature and personality. That's not their soul. That's the fu fully con con functioning of their intellect and all of the soul-based damage that's occurred through the hurt part of the soul. Yes. And, and unless we understand these principles, that unless we get to the soul cause and somehow get that soul cause out of our soul, yeah. every action we take, every physical pill we pop, everything that we do is all going to be based upon trying to address effects rather than causes. Yes. Um, perhaps if you'll permit me to personalise this yeah, yet sure, again. Sure. Um, <laughs> I know for myself, when encountering principles like dominance and progression, as they truly exist, yep. I have wanted to run from this experience of what is truly in my soul mm. because as a child, there, that wasn't rewarded. <laughs> yep. And so there's a feeling of wanting to be able, feeling helpless to change things and then feeling that, well, if I change this effect, if I work with this physical thing in my daily life, I get to avoid even feeling how helpless and hopeless I feel about, about change. And that hopelessness is there because there is such a terror of diving into the emotional state because of some things that are precluding, some fears mm. that make me believe that diving into that feeling state is going to create punishment kind of or thing. withdrawal of love or mm. something terrible. Mm -hmm. um, and so I see that um, I have fought the dominance if, of my soul, if you like, yes. uh, for that reason. Yes, the ma majority of people on the planet are in an active war with their own soul. Yeah. Uh, because they don't, you know, and they're taught to be in this active war from the time of their childhood. Their parents are in a war with their children's soul, generally. So what happens initially when a child is born, the parent starts feeling a lot of the things the child, uh, you know, the child, uh, the parent starts feeling a lot of things it doesn't want the child to be. Yeah. And as a result, the parent starts forcing stuff into the child. And of course, this creates a feeling of acceptance of the parent's dominance. Mm -hmm. And th that, of course, makes the child very, very afraid of being able to feel itself and to feel its true nature and personality. And as a result, most of us, by the time we're in our teenage years, and, and even in our rebellious teenage years, we still only are willing to go a certain Bad way yeah. with pushing the boundaries generally, you yeah. know, the average person. Or when we push the boundaries, we're pushing them because we're already angry, yeah. which is not a loving emotion coming from in our soul anyway. So by that time, we've already got a lot of unloving emotions yeah. inside of our soul driving our actions to rebel. And as a result of that, we become so afraid of being our true selves that even when we're alone, we're afraid of being our true selves. It's like the, the, the soul is, is, is so afraid of what the parents might have done mm -hmm. that it now thinks that it will happen to them if they change now as an adult. Yes, and they, they feel that they will experience that even with no one else around, <laughs> that it will yep. be terrible and frightening or yeah. whatever. And often as a result, it is terrible and frightening yep. because that is the belief inside of the soul. And that belief was created by the parents who created this particular belief that it's frightening to connect with your true self. You need, yes. to, you need to dominate your true self. You need to push it away. Otherwise, God or us will disapprove. We will yep. disapprove of you. Yep. You know, that's the, that's the implication of most of the parents' actions. And, and if they're of a religious faith, the parents probably inculcated that about God feeling this way towards the child. Yeah. And as a result, the, there's a terrible amount of fear inside of the child towards being itself. Yeah. And that's all because we have tried to suppress the soul's dominance. Yeah. yeah. And I can see that from both perspectives in yeah. terms of the error. So a, a terrible fear of just experiencing the error that is, exists within. Yep. But also... So the, so the preclusion emotion is the fear. The fear. The fear is precluding us from working through all of that fear, those feelings. Yes. Yeah. Yep. And also I have experienced that and I think a lot of people experience... Or maybe not, I don't know, I can only speak for myself. But in terms of 
my true nature and personality, which is a part of my soul, which wants to dominate and that will eventually dominate, yeah. scares the crap out of me yes. just being myself and expressing my passions and desires and, and my that's love about of God. the preclusion emotion of not being willing to surrender yes yeah <laughs> does that make sense i know well yep. so yeah so the preclusion emotion of not being willing to surrender causes us to refuse to surrender to our soul's true nature yeah which is going to dominate eventually anyway sooner or later once we surrender yeah and sooner or later what happens is we've expended so much energy not surrendering fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting most of our life that eventually we're so exhausted that we surrender. Yes. <laughs> it's far better to surrender much younger if you can yeah. rather than surrendering after just a long battle or war with your own soul. Yeah. yeah. And do you feel, why do you feel we resist surrender towards our, the positive aspects of our nature? Because we were taught by our parents and by our environment that those things weren't positive. Mm. You know, it's quite, it's quite plain that yeah. we, we've been taught those things. So... So again, it's about what is God's truth about the matter? Would God see these things as positive? You know? and, and if our parents believe they are so negative, what's the logical reason why they why believe they it's believe. so negative? Yeah. You know, these are the kind of things we're going to have to resolve in order to eventually allow the soul emotion, which is the preclusion emotion of fear, mm -hmm. to be released. Mm. Once, we, once this preclusion emotion of fear is released, then we are open to absorbing some new truths about ourselves and we're also open to acting in harmony with our soul's dominance. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah and it only ends in more pain trying to, to yeah. suppress the dominance, doesn't it? That's the sad thing, is yeah. that the majority of pain on the planet is, is caused by the, by the suppression of the soul's dominance. If, if the average person allowed their soul to dominate... They wouldn't be able to go to war. They wouldn't be able to take unloving actions towards their partners or friends. They would feel terribly guilty if they did. Mm. Uh, but, but, but they wouldn't even take those actions because the soul would have released the emotion as to what causes them to take those actions. And, and so, you know, unless we understand dominance and actually live our life in harmony with it, and this requires some courage, mm. because it, not only do we have to have the courage to release the reasons, the negative emotions, you know, the fear-based emotions as to why we're not allowing our soul to dominate, we have to have the courage to allow our soul to dominate even if in the future other people may attack us for such, for such allowance, you know. Yeah. If, if, there's all sorts of people up there who want to suppress you. There's all sorts of people who want you to be a different person than you really are. God's not like that. God wants you to be who you truly are, not what your errors dictate you are, but rather who you truly are. And that means you discovering your true nature and personality and having the courage to live it. Mm -hmm. And that's where I see a lot of people struggling. They, they discover some parts of their true nature but they don't let themselves have the courage to live to it. Live it. Yeah. They don't allow themselves to go through the fears that cause them to not be able to live it. Yeah. And so preclusion precludes them from being their true self. And that's pretty sad. It is, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Imagine a world where kids are, are taught from a little, from when they're born, that the soul has dominance and that this can be very empowering and they can learn so much by allowing the soul to dominate. Yeah, and that they're pure personality is something to be honoured and treasured, and treasured and, yeah. not something to be broken and, and pushed Con into a mould. Made into conform yeah. to a certain set of standards. Yeah. yeah, And, you know, a lot of people on this planet believe that conformity is the only way to engage law, yeah. and that is so wrong. Law of love does not demand conformity. It demands love. Yes. Love is the way to have a peaceful environment not conformity mm. yeah so this is something that we still need to learn on the planet that it's only love that can actually develop true peace yeah. conformity doesn't develop peace and we have a lot of evidence of that both in our personal societies in each individual country but also in the world as a whole we can see that many times we conform we compromise but it doesn't create peace it doesn't create peace at all when we love it creates peace that's the only thing that's going to create peace. Yeah. And, and love comes from the soul. So the soul is going to have to change yeah. and, and be dominant in order to love. Yeah. 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 
So perhaps we should wrap up our discussion of domin dominance sure. there because the next discussion is about progression, which yes. is all about how we can do that. And how we can engage all of the principles so far so that far. we've learnt. Yeah. Yeah.